uh, as part of Unit 2 exam. Now, um, first part is the way I teach this is um, so styles will go onto formats. So when you think about formats such as web pages, what kind of information can we put on there? So we can put on the following stuff text, graphics, videos, uh, animations, all them kind of things, okay? Um, I'm just going to run through them that quick, um, just to give you uh, some examples. Uh, you need to make sure that you know what, uh, what the good things are and what the bad things are, okay? But I'm just going to run through them as a basic concept, just so you understand what they are. First one, text, pretty self-explanatory, so stuff like given... Um, Description on a website of maybe a specific product, um, or if you were going to say a accident, for instance, then you can um, actually uh, explain or type up like a, a like a report in terms of what's happened, all them kind of things. Uh, graphics, stuff like images, um, so take pictures of uh, of the of the of the accidents while you're there, for instance. Uh, videos again. Take videos of why you are there, look about uh, the solutions involved around what you're going to be doing, all them kind of things. Um, next one along is going to be um, animated uh, or animations. So this is you uh, basically animating specific pieces of detail for the, uh, for the user or the customer to understand it in a bit more of a fun way, really. And this could be done using GIFs or cartoons or stuff like that solely depends on the target audience of the actual data. Next one is going to be audio. Uh, that's pretty self-explanatory again, stuff like podcasts, uh, giving people reviews on certain things. Uh, next one along, numerical, same thing again, pretty self-explanatory. So how much did you earn in uh, year one, year two, year three, and then you can compare then that information depending on whatever you want. Okay, so uh, really in businesses, you should see a steady increase in income uh, over the years that you are in business. Uh, next one along is going to be uh, Braille. So this is going to be a piece of paper with like small like raised sort of uh, bumps or dots on them really. Uh, and people who are blind, uh, they will be able to read the text just by feeling them using their hands. Uh, tactile images is basically the same as Braille text, but... Uh, they are basically small raised dots on a piece of paper that will show um, or, or give the person who's blind the feeling of what the actual image is. So, for instance, if it is a ball, it will be uh, the, the raised dots will be in the shape of a ball, for instance, that kind of stuff. <clears throat> Next one, which obviously is subtitles used for people who are maybe deaf. For instance, so it can't hear the audio, but can certainly read the um, the text at the bottom of, let's say, the film or of the YouTube video or whatever you want to see. Boolean, straightforward, yes or no. So, um, are you male or female, or um, uh, would you like to subscribe to the newsletter? Yes or no. That kind of stuff. Okay. Tables and spreadsheets. This is where the raw data will get input into. And again, um, if you want the raw data in on it, that's fine. Uh, and then we'll put it in spreadsheets. We can put it in like in like little headings above each column, just so we understand what that data is. Next one along is tables and spreadsheets. So these tables and spreadsheets are going to give you the ability to um, basically, um, not tables and spreadsheets, sorry, we just went through that, uh, charts and graphics. So charts and graphics gives you the ability to uh, to summarise up that data from them tables, from them spreadsheets, and gives you the ability to sort of, uh, to see a, a like a graphic, like a pie chart or a, or a bar chart, just to summarise up that data to make it easier for you to read. Next one, 2.2, so that's going to be classification of information. And this evolves around, um, basically, uh, how can we keep or how can we secure different pieces of data? So, for instance, when we've got the classification of it, uh, do we need to make sure our medical records are private or, or out in the open, for instance? Well, obviously, we need to make sure they are private and they are confidential. So, we're just going to go through each one. First one is sensitive information. So this is sensitive information that should not be genu uh, generally available. In other words, uh, if it was um, put out in the open, it could harm someone. 
Uh, so, for instance, um, for instance, personal medical records, for instance, unlike the surface, so somebody who might be uh, partially deaf, for instance, only certain people need to know about that. Uh, not everybody needs to know about that kind of information. So, again, it's understanding that. When we then look at non-sensitive information, that's stuff like addresses for shops or for, uh, for the head office or them kind of things. This is basically non-sensitive information that the public will actually need to see, uh, just so they can actually obviously attend that shop or attend that head office for certain things. <clears throat> Second one's private. So, uh, private information um, can be about both individuals or organisations, and this may include addresses, phone numbers um, of spe uh, specific people, um, or for instance, um, stuff in, say, legal matters, got to make sure that that is private and kept private within specific organisations. So we've got public information. So this is basically information that is made available by the government. Uh, so people will be able to see specific policies or specific laws. They are all publicly, it's all public information that everyone needs to be aware of. Second one is obviously personal information. So this personal information is going to be stuff like about you. So for instance, individual phone numbers, um, individual uh, passwords, all them kind of things. That's all personal information to you. Uh, and business or so business information, so stuff like annual sales, um, what you what you kind of sell, how many shops you've got, uh, all these kind of things. That's all types of uh, that's all business information. Next one is going to be a confidential and classified information. So, for instance, if something is confidential, uh, it's basically going to be kept private, um, as it will be relatively sensitive data. Okay, so again, think of it as confidential. This is going to be a school report of a specific need in, uh, for students. Um, basically, if it's confidential, only the specific staff need to know about it. Not everybody does. So, for instance, um, if somebody learns in a specific way or has got something specifically wrong with them and uh, the teacher needs to be aware of that, only that specific teacher needs to be aware of that. Nobody else. No other teachers because they don't come into contact with that student. Compared to something which is classified information, this takes another step up. And this is only going to be for the eyes of probably about two or three people maximum. Uh, so this is going to be stuff, for instance, the NHS database. So if the if your doctor is maybe, um, say for instance, you've got something specifically wrong with you, then the uh, your doctor and yourself and maybe a, a neighbouring nurse or maybe a student doctor will be able to see that, but that is it. Um, that is not going to be publicly available to anyone at all, okay? And then the last one is going to be partially or completely anonymized, okay? So, for instance, if we are completely anonymized, that means that even though your notes will be there, uh, the name will be erased or your and your home address, for instance. Uh, we use this when, uh, when, say, for instance, your exams get marked. Uh, the exams get sent to the examiners. Um, and they can't see the name of who has uh, who has uh, uh, done the paper. Uh, they can just see the paper itself. Okay, um, that means it is completely anonymized. If it was partially anonymized, that would mean the examiner would just be able to see, for instance, the initial uh, or maybe the first name, for instance. Uh, so, for instance, John or whatever. Okay, that is all they would need to know really, but mainly it's going to be completely anonymized, which basically means the um, the owner of that data is going to be, uh, no one know it will be owned by them. Okay. <coughs> Next one. Uh, so the quality of the information that is provided. Now, when we start looking into it, there is four different characteristics, okay? And you need to be aware of these for both uh, businesses and for, uh, for individuals as well, okay? So the first one's going to be bias. Is that information bias? Is that information one-sided? So, for instance, if somebody supported a specific football team, 
they are going to be biased compared to that one football team compared to other people who um, who might not follow football. That means it will be an unbiased opinion because they're not really that bothered about understanding or to giving their own opinion uh, around that specific uh, football team or football club. The next one is the validity of that information. Okay, how valid is that information? Um, and if the if the information is not valid, how will that affect that person, or how will that affect that business? So, for instance, if you look at say a business, and we look at say the the annual figures, but the annual figures are better than um, than what they actually are, then the company won't really take action. But if the figures aren't the best and that is not portrayed to them, then potentially they might go out of business or lose more money in the end. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the reliability of that information. So, for instance, if you were to research stuff on the internet about a certain someone um, and you use something like Wikipedia, now Wikipedia is not a reliable source of information because that is for people who can access that data, can change that data, can manipulate that data to um, to suit their needs, basically. And the last one is comparable. If we are comparing um, two pieces of data together, then we need to make sure that, um, that they are the same kind of data. So, for instance, if we are comparing how much someone earns compared to another, we need to make sure we see the same figure for each one. If we see someone's monthly figure compared to someone's annual figure, that's different, so that's not comparable. So you need to make sure that uh, when you start looking at the characteristics of, of the information, that it is the same so we can compare it together. Okay, and then the last one is going to be the information management process. So how can we manage information um, in the correct way, basically? Okay. Um, and these comes down to these um, simple six steps, really. The first one is collecting the information. Uh, the second part is going to be uh, store securely and obviously retrieve the data. The second one, so the third one in is going to be manipulating and processing the data. The fourth one is the analysis of that data. Uh, fifth is going to be securing and sixth is transmitting, okay? So let's start at the top one, uh, collect and store and retrieve information. Now this information is gonna be basically collected in various ways. This might be paper-based um, questionnaires, online forms, um, it might be sending out text messages with some, you know, if you've been on the phone to, um, to say Vodafone, for instance, they will send you a text afterwards to say, how is the, how is the, um, the person on the other end of the phone, how have they been, or if you've bought a car, that uh, you will get a text or an email to say, how has that salesperson been? Um, and then once the information is collected, then it will be retrieved by the manager and it can be checked through, okay? So that is collecting, storing and retrieving data. And don't forget that idea of storing data will be password protected within an area that only certain people will be able to see. So for instance, the manager, and obviously that employee, if you wanna work on the thing of, if you're gonna be buying a car, then the employee, who it is it about, and obviously the manager will be able to see it, but nobody else, okay? Second stage is gonna be the manipulating and processing of the data. So for instance, um, when we wanna manipulate that data, um, why do we want to um, change it? Or to, uh, or to process that data. Well, it's basically so we can see a snapshot or like a little summary of that piece of data. Now, it's obviously easier to do that if it's a numerical. Um, on the scale of one to 10, how good was the sales advisor? Or on a scale of one to 10, how good is your, uh, was the film or, or whatever? Um, but again, um, this can be obviously manually inputted or it can be just summarised up using maybe some graphs or some tables. Again, once we've found out that and we've actually manipulated it and processed that data, then we can start analysis and we can start looking into it and saying, 
why are we losing money there compared to losing money or, or making money in this area but not making money in that area, for instance? Um, and this can be done by loads of different companies. Um, it can also be done by schools. So, for instance, why is this subject getting these grades but that subject isn't getting these grades? And then that is where we can analyse that information. Once we know that information, we've processed the information correctly, then that gives us a gives us a good picture in terms of what it looks like. Once all that's done, then we need to secure it. Uh, and we can secure this using um, basically we can store it on a hard drive and make sure this is fully encrypted. Okay, now we're going to go through encryption a bit later on um, in one of the lessons. Um, but basic encryption is scrambling the data. So if people try and hack in, uh, they can't access that data because it is it'll just look uh, it'll just look like a random set of letters and numbers to them. Now, um, this can also be kept secure by using obviously passwords and making sure that you use a strong password, all these kind of things. But also making sure that um, the people who need to see that information can only see it. Okay. And then the last part on this is obviously going to be transmitting the data. So, for instance, how can we send or share that information to the relevant people? And again, this comes down to having good quality information. If I am sending out a school report, for instance, I need to make sure that I am sending out the school report for that student to that family. If I send it to the to a wrong to the wrong family, that means I've got the wrong piece of information, which then goes down to poor quality information. Okay, and that is the end of Unit Two Learning Outcome Two.